tree venison and steak and onions. Yeah, this is 4-2 here, just the, the short range forecast. Girls can fish. <laughs> High fives. Finally getting a break in the weather. We've got over a week of wet windy conditions. It's been terrible, terrible for the deer. And uh, it's now the 9th of April, so we're looking forward to getting into some sunshine and roaring stags. We've only got a window of two days of fine weather, so we really need to make it count. We're meeting up with a couple of lads from Auckland, Sam and Terry. So we settle in at base camp before our big day tomorrow. But first, Sam's going to tell us about his $7,000 rifle. I was supposed to be coming down with my old man, but unfortunately he, uh, he got quite unwell and couldn't make it. So uh, Terry got the call up, <laughs> shoot his first deer. He's been on a few trips, but hasn't quite managed a deer yet. This gun here is a Remington 700 in uh, 270 Winchester. Uh, started out life as a pretty standard gun that you'd see on hunting and fishing shelf uh, but that's pretty much where it stops it's had a lot of work done to it over the last sort of 18 months got a loophole scope on the top uh, it's a long range model I'm at Millen stock which is uh, from the what they call their edge technology it's ultra light made of carbon fiber so I've got a, a Harris bipod on here it's got a few modifications one's what they call a pod lock and that, uh, normally the bipod will swivel like that, but you can lock it up so that you get your, your rifle nice and level and it locks it right in place so that it doesn't twist around when you're shooting. Uh, the other thing modification I've made is the stainless steel spikes. Um, they're great because they dig into everything and um, gives you a really nice solid rest so you don't slip. Well, um, I shoot a standard 270 Winchester. Um, it's a, just a standard calibre that you can buy from any gun shop. It's got a 150 grain Berger VLD projectile. Uh, these are a match grade bullet and fairly expensive. Uh, yet to shoot a deer with one. Um, hopefully it'll put down the animal. I want the uh, gun to be the absolute best it can so that when I'm in the bush I know that if I miss it's only my fault and not the, not the weapon. Um, so yeah, uh, we're heading to the hills tomorrow and see how we go. Quick nourishing breakfast, a small adjustment to the lead lens, a headlamp. We test the wind and we're away to an early start. It's not vital to get away to an early start during the war, as stags can respond at any time of the day but it certainly doesn't hurt, and it's not long before we get into some action. The action was short-lived. When we hear a stag bark and then roar, he's often seen us or smelt us, and that means back to the bush bashing. About three hours later, we came on to this animal. What is down there? Is it, is it just one or is it two? I reckon it's one. It's one. Put the bus in the hole.
he's coming, he's getting closer, and he's moving. He was over there before, he's actually moving more to the right. This stag answered from a long way off, and I was about to leave him to it, when Terry thought the yeah. roaring was getting a bit closer. He's coming up this way. Okay, boys, start heading down that way. I think we're better being that side, eh? Yeah, yeah because he's and if we wind. have to, we don't want to get that wind going like that. We moved in on the stag and made a good approach. That way, but because we've dropped down now, he's come up where we were. This is the moment of truth. It's risky because while sitting in the same spot trying to roar the stag in, there's a chance he's going to smell you. But it's also the most rewarding. When you scare a stag at this time of year, it's worth letting out a volley of loud roars, as it can often stop the stag and give you one more chance for a shot. No. The stag's staying put, so the idea now is to try to sneak in a little closer in the hope of getting a clear shot. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's unreal, man. I've never seen anything so close. 
Right, they're just magnificent, aren't they? Let's be honest. Right, he was he was right up for that, wasn't he? You know, we're fairly well in the open. I might just go have a look. I reckon no, I'm... we're going over because I've, I've got a feeling he's down. But... I reckon I shot over the top. Do you? Oh, okay. But, I don't know. <laughs> don't know. She just walked away. I could hear him and I was like, man, he's having a proper go there. That's why I said, why don't we turn around? And you could hear him actually getting closer. Yeah, you... And then when you said, like, you know, it's... It's very rare nowadays to get them to roll to you without you doing it. And he was proper having a go, wasn't he? Yeah. He was really coming I mean, over. He was looking right at me and I thought, you know, if if I move he's gone, so I'll try and shoot him high. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's uh, cool. That's cool. cool. Funny. Yeah. Okay, let's have a take a look. I feel a bit naked with it. I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't know. Probably an extra bullet that I'm missing. You go through. I'll follow you, boys. I was waiting for him to hit the wind, you know? Yeah. Nah, the he was over here, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the photos was coming straight at us. Do you he went down quite oh, no, I just, just went so quiet and I know they can take off quietly, but, um... <laughs> and there's his footprints. Yeah. <laughs> is that running? Is it? Yeah, it's gone that way. Straight right. over. Fire in front here. Just check for the blood, boys, just in case. That's how, that's how good they are though, they're so quiet, eh? Yeah. No, but you felt you, you felt you went over the top? Yeah, I, definitely, because his marks are coming down here. Yeah? yeah, he could be, I mean, he could be hit as a body shot, you know, but um, you felt any blood? We spent some time looking around, but it became apparent this was a clear miss. Well, it's been a long day for the three of us. Been up since six o'clock, and uh, we, we decided to take on a little bit extra, didn't we? And got a little bit of... Uh, a yearling the boys got this morning and uh, we carried on we're going to cut right across the main range and then out of the blue now it's interesting to note that it's uh, about quarter to one now so it's quite late in the day so it's always worth worth persisting because you just never know when that when that moment's going to happen and that was a corker <laughs> We've covered some country and we've been rewarded for our effort. This is our third stag encounter for the day. great day for action which is pretty rare these days. It's now getting later into the afternoon and time's running out. We need to get Sam his stag. Mm. 
This stag is really keen. He's come a good distance up the valley towards us. Now he's starting to get mad. The stag has obviously seen us move and he's now being more cautious. When roaring a stag in it's vital to keep all movement to a minimum. A deer will spot the slightest twitch and when that happens your chance can be gone in a second. And I nailed him straight clean in the shoulder. Yeah, he's down. He just started to move nah, and turned away. Shh. It's important to listen carefully after you fire. A deer can often run 80 yards after a well placed shot. He's done. He's crushed. He's... Yeah. Awesome. Unreal, man. Not much footage because I can't see him. Well, oh, I mean, he, he pretty when much. When he was down here, you guys could see him, eh? Yeah. No, I could only see I his could, antlers there. I could see his very top, no, no. tight. Yeah, was it? I very could top. see him, and then when I sold him, that's why I said to you, he stopped. Because yeah. he stopped. Yeah. And that's when he just stepped out, and you could yeah. see him, he was side well, you, you know, when he turned away, yeah. that's when I just if, got a shot, and I reckon. Yeah. No, you've got him. Straight in the shoulder. You must have got him, dude, because he was square on, clear, and then he's come across, hasn't he? I think you got the best view, Terry, because I saw bugger all. I saw him come through here. Tommy, look, la. He got into here, and I could just see the very tops. He bolted, and then... He's bigger than I wasn't missing one. this time, I tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go check it out. Yeah, found him? No, but I've got blood. Oh, yeah. Is the rifle empty? Yeah. Cool. Okay, boys, here. Ah, oh, yep. See that? Yeah. Okay. Which way has he gone now? Here we go. Oh, he's not there. Oh, what? I think he's stuck in the right of vine. He's got a bit of heavy timber there on the one side, isn't he? Oh, he's got tangled up in this, hasn't yeah. he? He's yeah. Sort of whipped his head off. Back he's well stuck. Yep. Oh, it's a way of dragging him off, Buckley. <laughs> Not dragging him up, I would think. Yeah, I can. He's going down. <sighs> well, good work. Thanks for that. Well done. Teddy. Cheers, Clyde. <laughs>
Right, the work begins, boys. That's how heavy he actually is. Heavy. He's a big, he's a big stag, boys. Right. It's a fair beast. She weighs a bloody ton. It's only a baby, we're just warming up for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. a run round before the main match. Yeah. Shame that the, uh, it's not evened up a bit, but hey, seven points is uh, good by me. It's a pretty reasonable year of where ahead there. Seven points is good by anybody, dude. Now we've got to try and get the bastard out of here. That's a <laughs> decent stag too, boy. Okay. Sam, look at me. And tilt the head this way. That's it. Nice, mate. I'll get a to shot a photo shop. <laughs> It's been a great day. Sam got a stag and we all got some venison to take home. There's no complaints here. Well, that's a great side, eh, boys? Oh, oh you better believe it. Grab a road. Oh, just all the end, take it on. Is that cheese? No, we're in the trees. <sighs> Unfamiliar surroundings. <laughs> Which way is the vehicle in? Oh, we are, I'm guessing that way. Yeah, I would say that way. Girls can push. <laughs>